I'm sure that absolutely none of you will be surprised to know that supposed centrist commentator Tim Pool is once again defending and justifying the violent actions of far-right fascists who yesterday decided to attack LGBTQ plus supporters outside of a committee meeting at a school in Glendale, California. Now, we're going to talk about Tim Pool, but for a moment, I want to take some time to discuss the event in question because I think that the context in this story is absolutely crucial. So as John Keeley of Common Dreams explains, far-right fascist groups and homophobic parents instigated violent clashes outside a local school committee meeting in the town of Glendale, California on Tuesday evening, which resulted in defenders of the district recognizing June as Pride Month being punched, kicked, pepper sprayed and thrown about as police failed to maintain a peaceful situation. Local reporters estimated that 500 people, which included local parents opposed to recognizing the dignity of LGBTQ students, as well as others identified as traveling fascists, we'll come back to that in a moment, and outside agitators without students in the district, like the far-right Proud Boys and other fascist groups, had gathered outside the meeting. Now, unfortunately, I can't play a lot of the footage that we're going to be talking about here because it shows physical altercations, which I believe would violate YouTube's terms of service, but I will link you to all of these videos down below. Uh, but what I do want to do, so you have the context, is go over a couple of screenshots here because these details are important. First of all, this entire scene is chaotic, but focus on the man in the white shirt. It reads, leave our kids alone. So that man, he hits the person with long brown hair near the person with a purple coat. And the cop behind him presumably sees him committing this assault, approaches him, and then pushes him out of the way while not restraining him. Now, the man then goes on to run to a different area and starts punching someone else. Now, the person in the purple jacket presumably tries to pull away the person who's getting attacked. Police yank them away and subsequently swarm that person who appeared to be defending someone who was getting physically assaulted, but back to the dog pile because after that person who was getting punched got up, well, police restrained them. Meanwhile, the fascist who ran over to punch them is just standing there. Nobody's trying to restrain him, at least in this video. And again, when we're just kind of seeing snapshots of the kerfuffle here, it's really difficult to get the context here. So we're kind of seeing just flashes of what happened. It was very chaotic and it was violence. And again, I'm going to link you to the videos down below so you can watch them and judge for yourself. But it's very clear that there were a lot of fascist anti-LGBTQ plus people here who were not just instigating violence, but outright physically assaulting people. Now let's go over some additional footage briefly. So at 6.39 p.m., journalist John Peltz reported that police were telling the pro-LGBTQ plus side that they have to leave the property and Glendale Police Department confirmed with him that the other side was allowed to remain. Yeah, so it's obvious who police were siding with here. Eight minutes later, when the fascists started to dwindle in numbers, well, then police started to prepare to clear them out. Fascists were also filmed pushing past police to attack LGBTQ supporters. Before that, they were antagonizing them, yelling uh, that they take their masks off, calling them sick people and pedophiles. And a clergyman who was there in support of LGBTQ plus people was even pepper sprayed by a far right protester. They even swarmed status coup journalist Tina Desiree. And if you didn't know any better, this just looks like an anti-LGBTQ plus group of parents, concerned parents, who were probably drunk on right-wing propaganda, mistakenly thinking that this school wants to indoctrinate kids and groom them into the LGBTQ plus lifestyle by declaring June as pride. Now, again, there were parents who were there who were against this declaration, but this narrative of concerned parents is a bit disingenuous, but it was being pushed by far-right propagandists like Andy No, for example, who was portraying this as families just angry about pride events. The Daily Wire also tried to portray this as a clash between Antifa and Armenian and Hispanic parents. Now, this account claims that the parents in the Armenian community, they just don't want their kids sexually groomed at school. And I guess by declaring June as Pride Month, kids are literally being sexually groomed because of course that makes sense. Now, there's a lot to say about this. First and foremost, obviously, declaring June Pride Month is not tantamount to sexually grooming children. If you think that, you are delusional. 
It's absurd. Now, the school has declared June Pride Month for four or five consecutive years in a row. But only this year, it's an issue. Only all of a sudden, after the LGBTQ community becomes the targets of right-wing propagandists and Republican politicians, this becomes an issue. Now, parents are concerned that um, their kids are being sexually groomed. Well, were you, were you not concerned in 2021, 2019? But all of a sudden, parents are so outraged that they are engaging in physical violence. Listen, it is not out of the question, again, to think that parents are suddenly concerned because of all of the right-wing propaganda. And to be clear, many of them did show up to speak specifically at that committee hearing. But a lot, if not most, and again, we don't have the ability to quantify this because the scene was chaotic. But a lot of this was astroturfed by traveling fascists, as John Keeley pointed out in that Common Dreams article. So back to the traveling fascists, because journalist John Peltz wrote, for the people thinking the anti-LGBTQ plus side is, quote, concerned parents is chock full of Trump supporters. I overheard two people talking on that side about having brass knuckles, and there have been groups of anti-LGBTQ plus protesters circling cops to start confrontations. And this wasn't the only protest that some of these organized fascists attended this week, because as journalist Sergio Olmos reports, well, this wasn't the first protest for some of these individuals. They also protested on Friday evening at an elementary school in North Hollywood, and they literally brought a truck pulling a trailer that says, leave our kids alone. But I'm sure that this is just, you know, concerned parents who decided to do this. Now, one of the anti-LGBTQ plus antagonists who was arrested claims that he was running for Congress. Definitely a concerned parent here and not some Republican politician trying to get his name out there. So we are talking about organized fascists, multiple groups most likely, but not just organized fascists, the most organized traveling fascists because, and this was hinted at in the Common Dreams article, but as the Washington Post reports, some of the people opposing LGBTQ rights were identified on social media as members of the Proud Boys, a far-right group with a history of violence. A Glendale police spokesperson told the Post that authorities have not yet identified specific groups or individuals representing particular groups related to the protest. Quote, we have seen the online posts and will look into identifying the agitators from both sides, police told the Post. Well, thank goodness. I'm sure that people in Glendale feel so relieved knowing that the local police there are at least pretending to still both sides this after they were seen on video siding with the fascists in many instances. But when you have the Proud Boys and presumably other organized fascistic groups there being openly antagonistic, trying to instigate violence and clashes, it is very disingenuous to chalk this up to concerned parents when this is fascist violence. And again, that's not to say that concerned parents can't also engage in this. But I mean, the concerned parents who actually have kids at this school were probably inside speaking at this committee meeting, peacefully vocalizing their disagreement. I mean, it's possible that some were part of the overflow crowd. I'm not sure. But I think we all know what's happening, right? This pride declaration, which was not an issue before, is suddenly a problem because fascist propagandists have worked overtime to portray all LGBTQ plus people as child sexual predators. And on that note, let's get back to Tim Pool, because I don't think that people truly understand the power of propaganda because so many people have been working uh, over time to demonize queer people, and it has effectively worked just regular people into a frenzy, thinking that LGBTQ plus people are grooming children and sexualizing children. And people online are becoming increasingly vocal about the fact that they want violence against queer people. They want executions against queer people. Here's a couple of examples shared on Twitter by Alejandro Carabayo. And these are not isolated incidents, but here's what she shares here. So libs of TikTok, they tweeted out a picture of teachers in rainbow gear asking, imagine walking into your kid's elementary school and this is what greets you, what do you do? And this individual responded by saying, what is a mass shooting for $500, Pat? I mean, I don't know if they are stating their intent to
to do violence here. But at a minimum, they are calling for violence or saying that violence should be done because these teachers are literally just wearing rainbow gear. Ian Miles Chung asked, what should be done about teachers, doctors and psychiatrists who promote, enable or perform gender affirming care? And this person responded saying, kill them. Another person responded saying helicopter, wood chipper, compost in that order. And in response to the violence in Glendale, Tim Poole tweeted out, dads are starting to rise up against leftist pedophiles and this person responded saying i don't care how it looks or sounds i salivate at this groomers deserve violence and that's exactly what they're getting and to be clear these are just a few examples i've seen a plethora of examples myself but this thirst for blood among fascists is being carefully cultivated by people with very large platforms who know what they're doing it is purposeful these people are being duped into believing that all queer people are pedophiles and this is a dangerous defamatory lie. I mean, think about it. If you thought that somebody was abusing children, would you not be outraged? Justifiably so. All of us want to protect children. So if these people genuinely believe that queer people are a threat to children or school officials are sexualizing children, then from their standpoint, it makes sense to want violence to protect these children. But it's all based on lies. And most right-wing propagandists have increased their anti-LGBTQ plus rhetoric and vitriol, but few have been as willing to explicitly spread this defamatory lie as Tim Pool. Others might resort to priming and innuendo, whereas this centrist Tim Pool, he just says it. Queer people are pedophiles. For example, he defended the violence on Twitter saying, if you're a dad and apolitical and you get angry that pedophiles are trying to groom your kids, then you're a far right extremist. So he's pretending as if it is a fact that this school is filled with pedophiles. And not only that, they're grooming their children simply because they wanted to declare June Pride Month. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows what kind of rhetoric he's engaging in. He knows the effect of these lies. And it's not the first time that he's done this. After the November mass shooting at a drag show hosted by Club Q in Colorado, Tim Pool responded saying, it seems that around 10 p.m. Club Q posted they were having an all ages drag show the next day. About two hours later, the shooter came in. People keep calling for wood chippers and this is what happens. Now, on top of that, he tweeted out, we shouldn't tolerate pedophiles grooming kids. Now, nobody would disagree with this statement, but then you go one step further and you see who he's talking about here. Club Q had a grooming event. He's referring to the drag show, mind you. How do you prevent the violence and stop the grooming? So he basically justified the mass shooting. He justified the deaths of multiple queer people. And it was so egregious that many people called him out. But that includes his own sister who publicly condemned him on Twitter, writing, you really think LGBTQ people are grooming children? WTF is wrong with you. Do you not remember working at Mom's Coffee House in Boys Town in Chicago when we were teenagers? That community had some of the most wonderful people we've ever met. Yeah. So based on that, we know that he is aware that queer people are not groomers or pedophiles. Tim Pohl, as much as I disagree with him, he's at least intelligent, right? Or at least more intelligent than other right-wingers, despite the stupidity that he spews. But I think a lot of it is him trying to act as a useful idiot so he can appease his far-right audience. But he's smart enough to know that queer people are not pedophiles. But he is still, nonetheless, purposefully spreading a lie that is literally inciting harassment, at a minimum, and possibly violence, against all queer people. This is affecting every single one of us. It's probably affecting cis people too, if they have kids and they have a rainbow flag in their house. I mean, who the fuck knows? For example, look at how it's affecting me personally. So this is one of the replies that I got on Twitter in response to me just posting about my channel's monetization status. Quote, groomer, why do you like to include children in your sexual fetishes? So do you understand? Here I am minding my own business, posting about a completely unrelated issue and this person comes into my mentions calling me a groomer and I'm assuming it's because he either knows about the show and knows that I'm openly gay or saw the uh, pride flags in my Twitter handle. Either way, simply because I'm gay, this person literally thinks that I am a groomer. No, I'm not a groomer. I think that actual groomers 
should be punished. I think that pedophiles should be jailed. I've seen firsthand the way that sexual predators destroy lives. And for you to just say that about someone who you don't know because they're gay is despicable. And that is not the first time, by the way, that I've been called a groomer. But if you're gay, you're a pedophile by default. If you're an LGBTQ plus ally and happen to be straight, they probably think you're a pedophile too. But that's not all because this person who I hope is trolling, I'm going to blur their name just in case. But they responded to one of my tweets saying, I'm very pro LGBT and pro pride. But books like this put maps, minor attracted persons, pedophiles in their illustrations. Why? And so much of the left looks the other way. Now, I don't know what this book is. I don't know what age this book is targeted to, but I clicked on the image and this person is outraged about a literal map. We're talking about a geographical map, right? We're not talking about a minor attracted person. We're talking about an actual map. But because there's a map in a gay book, he's assuming that it is a pedo dog whistle. So we are now literally reaching QAnon levels of conspiracies when it comes to LGBTQ plus issues. I mean, remember when QAnon thought that an Adam Sandler movie that had a scene with a pillow that had Q embroidered on it was some sort of a Q dog whistle? So that's where we're at with regard to LGBTQ plus discourse in this country. That's how far we've fallen after making so much progress these past 10 years. This is tiring. I am tired. I mean, by their logic, everyone's a pedophile. Have you ever worn a shirt that had too many colors or a rainbow around kids? Pedo. Have you ever told your child that some kids have two mommies or two daddies? Pedo. Have you taken your kid to a drag queen story hour or even let them know that a queer person exists? Pedo. Have you, have you shown them a map so they can learn about geography? Well, pedo dog whistle. That is not what grooming is. We know this. We all know this. And it is despicable to see so many conservatives weaponize righteous anger over child abuse for political gain. By conflating any and every LGBTQ plus related thing as grooming, it minimizes actual grooming that goes on by actual child predators who need to be caught. Actual predators who sexually exploit children, like, I don't know, maybe priests in the Catholic Church, they're probably very relieved to see this discourse taking place. But it's just sickening because to say that queer people are inherently dangerous to kids isn't just cruel and defamatory. It is a dangerous lie that is literally inciting harassment and violence against innocent people. And individuals like Tim Pool, who continue to do this even if they know it's wrong— I hope that the money is worth it. I hope that they can live with themselves because what they're doing is despicable. But honestly, I don't think that he cares. He's being purposefully antagonistic. He's deceitful, knowingly so, but that's what he's doing. At most, we can call him out, but this man has a much larger platform than myself and a lot of other people who are calling him out. But this is dangerous. And if he actually cares about innocent people not getting hurt, he would stop. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, F around and find out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, game, game, Pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Pride.